Flora, Chelmy, and Barton tail Leighton and Luke all the way to the future. With Flora in tow, Luke and Leighton return to the streets of the future London in search of future Luke. Good morning everybody, it's Minan and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Professor Leighton in the Unwound Future. In the last episode, we returned to the Unwound Future, and we accidentally brought along a couple stowaways. In this episode, we'll just have to deal with it, I guess. Where's the other Luke, Professor? Now that you mention it, we never decided on a meeting place. Perhaps it's time to pay Shipley a visit. Of course, he could get us in touch with Big Luke. Shall we head over to the arcade restaurant then? Hey, what the heck are you doing here? Okay, well, look who's back. Mr. Stash and Scarfin? The one and only. And who's your feathered friend there? Oh, you mean Potty? Rawr, nice to meet you, meet you! Okay, nice to meet you too, bird. Say, seeing as how you've got a dependable bunch, I've got a favor to ask. Lately, I can't get enough of mushrooms, especially this one this one little red delectable variety. That's where you come in. I'd like you to seek out one of those fine fungi and bring it round to me. A little delectable red mushroom. I haven't a clue where we could pick up one of those. Have you asked a Super Mario? Ah, oh, body knows, body knows. Body will go grab it. Okay, now that's the kind of can, can do attitude I like, bird. But are you really up to the task? Body's no, <laughs> I don't know who's talking. Potty's no regular bird. This should be a snap for him. Potty can now take on requests from people you meet during your adventure. So we have two separate minigames we can play with Potty. Help Potty complete the tasks requested in the parrot minigame available in the trunk. Like I said, I like to keep the minigames saved up until the very end where we could do all of them in one sitting. So for now, we're just going to ignore it. Though I guess if you're playing this for the first time, you might want to get the parrot minigames done as quickly as possible because the reward you get for it actually helps the main game. It doesn't just unlock a bunch of extras later on. Let's get the show on the road. Open the parrot minigame in the trunk and select my request. Come on now, how hard can it be to get one measly mushroom? Now hurry up with the fungus. I can't get enough of those little red mushrooms. You have to bring me one. Do we actually have to do it right now or can we like just keep leaving keep leaving no he actually wants us to do it okay fine we'll do it just because he's forcing us to the parrot has generously volunteered his services as a delivery bird unfortunately the heavy items he has to carry make it hard for him to fly properly predict his flight path and help him to help the recipient by making perches out of rope for him create a perch for your parrot by connecting any two posts with a rope the number of ropes at your disposal changes with each delivery request the position and angle of each perch will affect the trajectory of your parrot's flight. Build efficient perches that will help your parrot get to his destination as quickly as possible. Ropes can't intersect with each other, also you can't attach two ropes at the same post. Tap clear to erase all the ropes you've drawn from the screen. Tap start to send your parrot out to deliver his package. Watch how he flies closely. If you want to cancel a delivery attempt while the parrot is flying, tap quit. When the parrot lands on a flat perch, you will return to the basic flight path when he takes off next. By laying out a number of well-placed perches, your parrot can fly to very high places. Complete the course by guiding your parrot over to the delivery recipient. During delivery, if your parrot flies off screen or falls into a hole, you must re-attempt delivery. Your parrot must reach the recipient before time runs out, so keep an eye on the clock. When the parrot completes every delivery in the game, something neat will happen. Will he come out of the screen and be like, I deliver to you my love in real life or something? I don't know. So we got to deliver this thing. It doesn't have a sassy voice like uh, Sulu the hamster did, unfortunately. So not nearly as awesome, but well, he'll have to do. So I believe if you put it at an angle, then they'll bounce around. So you're going to you're gonna want to avoid those if you can. Maybe this will work? And there you go. First try even. I didn't even need the hint guide. I knew you were just a fellow for the job. This is perfect spec this is a perfect specimen. Oh, specimen. You just go on like that and you'll become a de fine delivery parrot. Okay, people will love you. Oh, love me. Delivery, delivery. You've earned the person's gratitude with your expert delivery skills. 
So we got one down. We got nine more to, or eight, nine, ten, eleven more to go. So we'll do those in due time. For now, we are just going to continue on our merry way. Ah, oh, I shouldn't have come in here. 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 Oh, maybe I should have just like kept the pyramid game going on for as long as possible. Okay, we got a puzzle right here. We're just gonna hurry up and get it out of the way as quickly as possible. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna talk about things. That sounds great, but I want to go ahead and get away from this guy as quickly as possible. Even though we're not even looking at him right now, just having to be around him in general makes me queasy. Lunch time. Can you make this exact sandwich? The ham goes above the potato salad. The only ingredient between the ham and the tomato is the lettuce. The cheese touches the bun. Neither the ham nor the lettuce is the very middle layer. Drag the ingredients to swipe their orders. Hint number one. Are you trying to stack the ingredients exactly as the rules dictate and finding that either the ham or the lettuce ends up in the middle? The trick is to work out where the ham goes. Hint number two. The ham goes either at the very top or the very bottom. Hint number three. The cheese goes on the very bottom. Super hint. If you put the ham at the very top, the cheese has to go on the bottom to be next to the bread. Since the lettuce has to go between the ham and the tomato, the order from the top down is ham, lettuce, then tomato. With the cheese at the very bottom, the sandwich is basically done. You're making me stinking hungry. Okay then, so we gotta go... Uh, cheese at the bottom. Uh, potato salad after that. Then tomato. If I can get it right. Then lettuce, then onion, then bun. Okay. Here's my answer. During this uh, whole pandemic thing, I was actually starting to quarant starting to quarantine. No, now I'm starting to Nathan's stock up on like subway sandwiches and just having them like over the course of like a couple weeks. Not sure if that's super recommended, but like if you're just getting like a, a veggie sandwich, it could be in the refrigerator for like two weeks, right? That's not gonna kill me, possibly. But like after I like heat up the sandwich for like 30 to 40 seconds in the microwave like it tastes like really stinking good it tastes like a stinking burger even though there's no meat in there or not even a veggie patty or anything like that it tastes like a stinking burger and it's amazing so i've been enjoying that lately thanks for the help there and as your reward here's the sandwich chomp oh wow this sandwich is out of this world who would have thought the potato salad in this sandwich could be so delicious and the crusty bread's a perfect match for the tomato and cheese i love it you don't love it more than my cucumber sandwiches, do you? Uh oh, did the last bite get caught in your throat? Don't eat so fast. Okay, let's just hurry up and talk. Oh, of course he has a puzzle. He has a puzzle. Go, don't, don't look at him. Look away. Look away. Look away. Look away. Oh, Flora, get away from him. Get away from him. You don't have to look at him. Oh no! Flora is faced with an impossible task to solve a puzzle while staring at the creepy drunk guy who looks like he's about to die. Puzzle number one thirty-five. Four jams. In the UK version, it's called Jam Weight. Four types of jam are combined into pairs and placed into four boxes below. Use the scale to determine the relative weights of each type of jam. The label and label them from the lightest to the heaviest, one to four. Just drag and drop. Hint number one. Identify the boxes that share a jam with each other. By weighing these boxes together, you can compare the weight of the two jams that aren't the same. Hint number two. Try comparing the red and blue box with the red and green box. You should be able to identify whether the blue jam is heavier than the green jam or vice versa. Hint number three. Continuing from on from hint two, try to figure out the weight of the red jam. To do so, compare the red and green box with the blue and green box. You should find that blue is greater than green is greater than red. Super hint. Thinking of red, green, and blue as 1, 2, and 3 temporarily, lightest to heaviest, you'll find that the yellow yellow box and the blue green box are equal in weight. This means that the two yellow jams are equal 3 plus 2, the relative weights of the blue and green jams. In other words, one yellow jam has a weight of 2.5. If you fit that into what you know about the rest, you're done. The solution is you input the answer. Thank you. I'm always like afraid to hit that because I'm afraid that it's going to just submit without me actually doing anything. But for red, you put one. For blue, you put four. For green, you put two. And for yellow, you put three. Hmm. Does this sound right? Did you see that? <laughs> Flora solved her first puzzle. I'm so proud of her. Sweet. Blue is greater than yellow, then greater than green, then greater than red. Yeah, so we have not only Leighton and Luke, but also Flora and- Ah, oh, jeez! <gasps> See? Nice going. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Get the chef sticker. Okay, let's get out of here. Okay, I'm out. Go, 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 go! 
But yeah, Flora can solve puzzles as well, and it's really adorable and cute, and I'm happy and proud of her, and I'm just really happy to see how much she's grown and how far she's come since we met her in Curious Village. <laughs> okay. <sighs> it's okay. I'll get through this. Are they all gonna grow up and leave the nest eventually? Okay. Got this bee again. Doesn't really have anything new for us because we are just getting all these puzzles. Don't have to worry about missing a single one this time around. I'm gonna get all of them on the first try. Let's go this way. And uh, maybe you have, yep, you have a puzzle as well. Oh, hello again, you two. Are you enjoying your visit to the big city? My visit here? I'll have you know I was born in this city. Sure you are, whatever you say. What about yourself? Were you born in this city as well? Me? Oh no, I was born and raised in Cardiff. I spent most of my life there as well. Not so long ago, I found myself in some rather unusual circumstances and ended up moving to London. It's like a movie, really. A sweeping, epic adventure where I'm the star. And speaking of movies, have you heard this one? Number 55, Picky Moviegoers. In the UK version, it's called Six Whiny Spectators. <laughs> Six moviegoers need to be seated at the theater, and it's your job to find an arrangement that will satisfy all of their requirements. A says, I refuse to sit next to, behind, or in front of C. B says, I can't stand the front row. C says, I don't like the left or the right seats. D says, I hate the back row or and the left side. E says, I prefer being on the right side. And F says, anything but the front or left seats. Oh. So where should each person sit? Bunch of picky peasants. Hint number one, try using the memo function to write down the possibilities for each seat. A depends on C, so keep those two on hold while you figure out the rest. Hint number two, after writing down the possibilities for each seat, it should become clear that there's just one decision you have to make. Only one person doesn't mind the back left seat. Who is it? Hint number three, B is fine sitting in the back left seat. Since there's no one else who wants to sit in the remaining left side seat, put A in there. Now you should know where to put C. Super hint. C gets the middle seat in the back row. The only spot left for F then is the back right seat. If you keep putting the moviegoers in the seats only one by one like this, you'll have this puzzle solved in no time. The solution is you go with A, then D, then E, then B, then C, then F. Or here's an even better solution. Go to the movie at different times if you have such a big problem being near each other. Hmm, how about this? Phew, that's a relief. Blockbuster! Oh, kids today aren't gonna know what that is. <laughs> so sad. Was Blockbuster around when this game came out even? Like, I don't know. Yes, that's the answer, all right. Enjoy the rest of your time in London, visitors. How many times do I have to tell you of I'm from London? Whatever you say, little fellow. Enjoy your time in the big city. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ugh, I give up. And we got another delivery request, but we're not going to do that quite yet. Just going to go this way now. I just remembered something. I have to go to the bathroom, but I can only go to the bathroom in the present time. Excuse me for a moment. No, not really. What's that, Professor? We've neglected to explain the situation to Flora. Yeah, she's been pretty chill about this whole thing, just traveling with us in this completely changed environment. You're right, it completely slipped my mind. No worries, I'm just happy to be alone for the ride, and not, you know, left behind as usual. Be that as it may, I think an explanation is in order. Let's stop by the hotel for a quick chat. Okay, Professor. Uh, this guy does not have a puzzle for us. Ding, 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 ding. Who's this? Hi there. Are you one of Luke's friends? It's nice to meet you. Ding, 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 ding. Old pals, yeah, right. Anyway, have a nice day, love, Dave, love, 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 love. Funny. I didn't realize you thought so much of me, Max. Okay, we're gonna go to the hotel real quick so we can explain everything to Flora in hopefully a quick fashion. He's quit poking me quick, literally. We're just poking everyone. Playing pokey. Oh, hello, are you from out of town? I suppose you could say that. We're here on an investigation. Yes, and all this walking we've been doing is really starting to catch up with me. Tired, huh? Well, you should know what always perks me up. A nice chunk of chocolate. I thought she was going to say a nice chunk of cookie because she gave us cookies last time. I've actually got some in my pocket. Would you like a piece? Like one? I'd love one. 
Oh my, I may have spoken too soon. The chocolate's got a hole in it. Now how am I going to divide it? Do you mind if I have a look at it? I think I could help. Flora's second puzzle already! I'm so proud of her! Number 137, Pieces of Chocolate. In the UK, it's called Chalk Hole 8. Sure. A 5 by 10 centimeter chocolate bar has a 5 by 1 centimeter piece broken off in the right side. As shown in the image below, how many more 5 by 1 centimeter pieces can you break off the remaining chocolate bar? Also, there's a 5 millimeter hole in the bar 1 centimeter in from the left side and 2.5 centimeters up from the bottom. Any piece that has even a tiny bit of this hole in it can't be included in your answer. Hint number one, break up the remaining chocolate bar into equal pieces. If you make each piece identical to the first piece, you'll end up with nine more pieces. Hint number two, if you break the remaining chocolate bar into the nine equal pieces in the same vertical manner as the first piece, you'll end up with two pieces on the left side with pieces of the hole in them. So that's nine minus two equals seven, right? Nope, you could do better. Try looking at it from a different angle. Hint number three, you don't have to break off all of the remaining pieces in the same way as the first one. Try breaking the pieces off horizontally from the left side of the chocolate bar. Super hint! You can get rid of the entire hole in just one piece. ONE PIECE! If you do that, how many are left? That's your answer. The solution is that you could break off... 8 more pieces of chocolate. Hmm, does this sound right? Take that, puzzle! Take that, puzzle, who's like, Puzzle punch! Ch Co correct. Sure, why not? <laughs> they get really cheesy with these stinking puns, or I guess in this case, chocolatey with the puns. Yay, now everyone can have a bite. Here you go, you two. Thank you very much. Mmm, it's delicious. Where's the glass of milk when I need one? Got another potty request. Uh, let's see if these two have new puzzles for us. This lady doesn't seem to have one. Let's just let her sleep. And neither does this person. I'm sorry, but only registered guests are permitted to enter that area. My name's Flora. I'm a guest of the Professor and Luke's. Well, sort of. Actually, what really happened is I followed them here because they ran off without me. They're always doing that, and to be honest, it really hurts my feelings, and... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take up your time by chattering so much. Flora, what on earth are you going on about? Don't mind her, Becky. Flora can be a bit awkward from around new people. Oh, I would never pry into a guest's personal affairs. That's against hotel policy. I'll be off now. Have yourselves a pleasant day. I hope Becky doesn't look too down on us if we're running out on Flora. Let's head into our room. And start talking. What a charming room. I'm glad you like it, Flora. We'll be sure to get you one of your very own later. Oh, no need for that. I'm happy to stay in this one with you two. We'll just put up a screen. Luke, you're the smallest, so you could sleep in that chair there. Then I could take one of the beds, and the professor could take the other bed. That's ridiculous. I'm way too big to fold myself into a chair. We can discuss the issue more later. For now, let's try to bring you up to speed, Flora. Alright, so what's this skinny? What the fruit? <laughs> Should I be hip? Right now, we are in a town that looks very much like London, but it's fundamentally different. Make no mistake. This city is a far more dangerous place than our London. How so? What he is trying to say is that we've traveled through time. This is London ten years in the future. What? We're currently working with a young man who identifies himself as Luke. According to him, in the ten years between this time and ours, I became a rather unsavory individual. And here in the future, I rule over the city with an iron fist. This young man is working with us to try and stop my evil future self. Wow, that's an awfully complicated story. Did you follow all of it? Yes, I think so. Can you imagine the professor as a crime boss? This is something I've just got to see. Oh, I just thought of something. What's up? If both of you and the professor have counterparts here, I should have one too, right? Sure, I don't see why not. But haven't you seen the future Flora here? Nope, not yet anyway. But didn't it strike you as strange that you hadn't seen me? Um, we've had had a lot going on since we came here, and we really haven't had much time. I guess I just thought the two of you would have been more concerned about my well-being in the future. Don't worry, Flora, I thought about you. I was wondering where future Flora was. I'll, I'll care about you even though the other two won't. 
There, there, dear. Don't get upset now. What do you say we brighten up those spirits with a trip to one of the best restaurants in the city? Oh, that sounds wonderful. Let's go. Ooh, nice save, Professor. I just care so much for a well-being. Like, the first game did such a good job. Hello, what? Okay, I guess the parrot gets to work right away, so we don't even need to solve the all the puzzles in order to have his service. So, yeah, the parrot is just like Sulu, and also the Tinker Pup, in which they uh, search out hint coins for us, but... In the first two games, we needed to complete all those uh, mini games in order to have that ability activate. But in this game, I guess we get it right away, which is really cool. Um, I'm not sure if it becomes like more, if it like has a more frequent activation ability if you solve more mini games, or if it's just uh, at full power from the get go. But that was really cool that he showed that, us that and stuff. Anyway, let's get out of here. But yeah, the first game. What the heck are you doing? I can't even get any of sentences out. Dear Dean Damona. Uh huh, fancy seeing you here. I just love using this voice for everyone. Have you been well? Yes, thank you. You're looking quite well yourself. Spry, even. Oh, heavens, this old man's growing older by the day. One look at my head of white hair will tell you that. Ah, oh, yes. I thought something was different about you. Some people say silver hair makes a man look distinguished, but I was partial to my brown hair. You know how Sir London's full of people who quick to sully your name, but I don't believe one of them. That was quite a shock, Professor. We saw the Dean only a few hours ago, yet he's aged a full ten years. Yes, time certainly appears to have left its mark on the Dean. Is something the matter? Not at all. I just needed a moment to think. Let's be on our way. As I've been trying to say, the first game made me really think and care about Flora's well-being, so like I kind of wish that she was more involved in the second and third games. I'm happy that she's here with us, and I just want to want her to have like a happy, safe future and all that good stuff because she deserves it. Now that's taken care of, let's go. I just want to make sure. Talk to Pointy again. Let's go this way and talk to this guy who's got a puzzle for us. Puzzles are the only way to pass the time during the snoozeworthy shift. See if you can wrap your brain around this head scratcher I cooked up. Puzzle number 56, five stamps. The five numerical stamps shown below are designed to fill in the four blank squares and complete the equation. Only one digit can be used in each square. Your task is to make a valid equation using the fewest number of stamps to fill in all of your blank squares. Pick the stamps you'll use by checking the boxes below them and then tap submit. Hint number one. You need to add up three single digit numbers to equal a single digit number. Think of all the possible equations you could create with five stamps. Hint number two. It might sound simple, but when trying to figure out how to use the fewest number of stamps, don't forget that if you use the same stamp multiple times, it still only counts as one stamp. Hint number three. Three, four, five, six, seven. This puzzle can't be complicated using just these five numbers. Remember though, that you're not trying, that you're not writing the numbers, you're stamping them. So be sure to consider all the different ways you could use the stamp. Super hint, there's no up, down, left, or right to the stamps, despite what you may think. There's only one stamp, however, that can be rotated 180 degrees to create a different number. If you use the stamp as the answer to the equation, you should solve this puzzle in no time. The solution is that the 3 and the 6 stamps are all you need, because 6 could also be a 9. Here's my answer. Phew, that's a relief. Correct. Oh, you solved it. Great, now am I supposed to get through another boring day on the job? Boring? Um, don't you work for a crime syndicate? If your job's boring, you're doing it wrong. Gee, I must be hearing things, because I could have sworn you just told me how to do my job. Eek! Oh, no, no, I didn't mean anything by it. Just ignore me. I got Luke is like an expert on being a mafia boss. <laughs> okay, sure. Whatever you say, Luke. We're back here in the fancy restaurant of awesomeness. Greetings, Shipley. Excellent timing, Professor. I just received a message from you and Luke. Uh, from your whatever. I don't care. He would like to go to the observatory in the park north up here. See that you're not followed. This park is the one with the road that joins Flatstone Street with Midland Road, correct? That's the one. Luke will be there waiting for you. Why do we need to make sure we're not followed? It sounds like someone out there may be monitoring our movements. 
Laura, are you paying attention to what's being said? This is very important. Of course I'm listening. Moving around in a group of three will make us more conspicuous. I know you don't want to be left alone, but I think it would be best if you waited for us at the hotel. As soon as we're done talking with the other Luke, we'll come to get you. No, I'm coming with you. Now, Flora. Oh, come on, Professor. Let her come along. We'll do our best to be stealthy on our way to the park. I don't know about this. It'll be fine. Besides, it might be more dangerous to leave Flora all by herself. I suppose you have a point. Where we're headed could lead us into some very dangerous situations. Are you sure you want to come along with us? Of course I do. I'm not scared. Well, that settles it. Let's get moving. Sorry, Luke, but we've got no choice but to put our dinner plans on hold again. I understand, Professor. No one wants to eat more than I do, but we shouldn't keep Luke waiting. Well then, what are we waiting for? Off we go! But now before we're solving another puzzle... Welcome to London's... I can't stop using that voice for everyone. Welcome to London's most delicious destination. I thought... I hope you brought your appetites. Not to mention your thinking caps, I've heard you have uh, got a real knack for solving puzzles. I suppose you could say that. Why'd you bring that up, sir? See, I ordered a few number plates for use in the back, but the company made a mistake. Number 57, Mispainted Plates. The number plates you ordered have finally arrived, but wait a second. Oh, misfortune! The manufacturer painted all the numbers on backwards by mistake. You'd like to use them as soon as possible, but it will take quite a while to fix each and every plate. To save time, the manufacturer would like you to make do with the plates that you can use as it can only be sent back as... And only send back the ones that must be fixed. Check off the only the plates you can't use. Basically, which numbers can't be rotated. Hint number one, the zero and the one can be used as is, obviously. Hint number two, you could also use the eight plate as is. Hmm, the two and five look really similar too. Hint number three, the four will go, the four will work just fine if you rotate it 90 degrees. And the super hint, look closely at the seven two. It will also work if you rotate it. Wow, quite a few will work just fine as it is, but there are some that simply must be fixed no matter how usable they might look at first glance. The solution, ever so conveniently, is 69. You can't use six and nine. That should do the trick. Few things satisfy like a puzzle solved. And a 69. Awesome! 6 and 9 definitely don't work. Blah 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 blah. It looks like I asked the right man for help. Thank you sir, I won't forget this. Believe me, there are more than a little extra gravy on the next plate of pie you order here. Whatever. And we got a milk bottle sticker! Hooray! And another delivery request. Looks like we're done here though. Uh, where are we going to the park observatory, wherever that may be? I don't know where the arrow is, guys. You gotta give me an arrow to work with. Uh, hello. These guys are just hanging out here. You there with a shady expression. Look at me in the eyes when I talk to you. I'm reading here. Why don't you buzz you off? Listen, hooligan. I'm acting under the authority of Scotland Yard. I demand that you comply with my investigation. Scotland Yard? <laughs> Big deal. It's been years since the police had any power in this town. No power, you say? You do well to take a close look at the fellow before you. The very sight of these fists sends thugs running for the hills. Will there, buddy? Settle down. Somebody help me. This weirdo's getting too close for comfort. Inspector, calm yourself. Uh, oh, Luke. Now, not now, lad. I'm putting the screws to this dubious fellow here. Inspector, please, I can vouch for this man. He's an ordinary citizen. Oh, so he's a friend of yours, Leighton? You should have said so earlier. Uh, you're off to the hook then, newspaper boy, but listen well, because I'll say this only once. Thanks, I'm listening. The soul of Scotland Yard and what it stands for is immortal, even in a corrupt pit of depravity like this. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got an investigation to attend to. Good day, Leighton. You. Thanks for saving me from that night and that loon. What was all that gibberish about Scotland Yard? Oh, the inspector doesn't mean any harm. He just tends to get a little worked up. Okay, he's still going off on his own. Doesn't want to work together, even though it might make things easier for all of us. 
Thankfully, she doesn't have another puzzle for us. And hopefully, she doesn't get too jealous by seeing us with Flora. Oh, hey, she can also chime in during the... Uh, the little investigation segments as well, which is cool. And up here now... Uh, you got no new puzzles for us. Uh, we're almost at our destination. And here we are. Just want to make sure no one had anything else for us. And we are good to go. I can't seem to open the door to the observatory. Is that so? Hmm, it appears that a puzzle is locking this door. Huh, I guess you're right. Worry not, Luke. I'll solve this puzzle and have us through the door before you know it. Puzzle number 58. Gravity Maze. Move the red and blue blocks to their respective places. Tap the arrow buttons at the bottom to rotate the playing field by 90 degrees. Blocks fall downward when there's nothing under them. Give it a try. Hint number one. If you rotate the playing field enough times, you're sure to get it. Hint number two. First think of how the blue blocks should move. After that, everything should fall into place for you. Quite literally. Hint number three. If you're having trouble, you might be tempted to keep restarting the puzzle. Keep on turning that playing field. Super hint, turn the playing field five times in a certain direction. So all we need to do is spin it clockwise five times. One, a two, a three, a four, a five. I've got a good feeling about this one. Well, that's settled. Superb! How many moves did it take you? A true master could solve this puzzle in five moves. That did it, Luke. The lock is disabled. And the door is open. Well, we made it to future Luke once again. I think we're going to save that conversation for the next episode, though, because we might have a lot to tell him. Next time on Professor Layton and the Unwound Future, we are going to converse with the future Luke, telling him what we know after our little return trip to the present time. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night. Mm -hmm.